Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and this time I'm playing in the Tier 8 Soviet light tank, the LTTB. It is very heavily armoured for a Tier 7 light tank, a lot like its older brother, the T-54 Lightweight, or the not-so-lightweight, as you might have seen featured on the channel fairly recently. Now, the LTTB in patch 918 made its transition, as a lot of light tanks did, upper tier. Previously, it was a tier 7 light tank in patch 9.17.1, although it had the same matchmaking that it has now, i.e. at tier 8, having the same matchmaking as a tier 8 medium vehicle. Now, when the LTTB made this transition, there were quite a few changes to the vehicle. Number one, they reduced the DPM, even though they moved it up a tier. And frankly, the reason why they nerfed the, the DPM, well, quite a lot of the DPM of the now tier 8 and tier 9 light tanks is because Wargaming decided that they didn't want the tier 10 light tanks to have as high DPM as arguably they should be. In fact, the old LTTB, when it was at tier 7, has only got just a fraction less DPM than the current tier 10 Soviet light tank, the, the T100 LT. So now we find that the LTTB at tier 8 has 2000 DPM. Sure, that's not bad, but it's not terrible. It's still usable, and when you're in a matchup like this, when you're one of only three top tier tanks, it does feel all the more impressive, as we're going to be seeing later on. Now, one thing that is absolutely lovely about the new LTTB is it's got better depression. Sorry, not depression. Well, it does, but more on that in a second. It's got better dispersion. And so that means when you're moving and when you're turning the turret, you can be more accurate faster. And that also means that you're better at firing on the move, which is incredibly useful in your light tanks, obviously. Now on to the depression of the vehicle. All LTTB drivers out there will know that this vehicle's main drawback was a horrific three degrees of gun depression when the vehicle was a tier 7 light tank in the previous patch. Now the vehicle has five degrees, which is positively usable. Now sure, that's not great. That's as bad as, for example, the T-54, a tier 9 Soviet medium tank, and a whole variety of Soviet vehicles as a matter of fact. But 5 degrees compared to 8 degrees just doesn't really leave you feeling awkward in many situations, as I certainly did feel previously with the LTTB. The vehicle also has more engine power, 10% to be exact, now with a 770 brake, what, a 77, 770 horsepower engine, not brake horsepower, that's completely different as far as I'm concerned, which allows it to accelerate up slopes faster and maintain its excellent top speed limit of 68 kilometers an hour along the flat. Apart from this, we have 100 more hit points as it's jumped up a whole tier, but it has 10 meters less view range, which is a little bit disappointing. Oh lord, nearly ruined this replay before it had even begun there landing on my side. That would have been incredibly awkward. I can't flip any more tanks, as I've been doing recently, if any of you have been seeing those posts. So, oh, there we go. AMX 1357, first kill of the game. Even though we rolled slightly low there, we got justice because we set him on fire, taking him out, uh, hopefully with that single shot as we would have wanted to. Now we're going to turn our attention towards the tier 8 French light tank, the Bat Chantillon 12T. And there we go, 179 rolling, pretty much a coin flip there, 50-50, whether I'm going to kill him with my 180 alpha damage on this tank. Now I've got the side of the T-150, and you can just see what tier 8 light tanks can get up to when they gather some momentum in these minus 2 matchmaking situations. Now, the LTTB was fully capable of this before, but I'd say that, uh, fair enough, the DPM nerf has hit it a little bit, but it, it's more suited with its better depression, its better dispersion, and just look how accurate we are when firing on the move. That truly is one of the specialties of your light tanks. And pretty damn good aim time as well at 2.1 seconds, which is a lot better than quite a, a few of the other tier 8 light tanks. So right now, it's about just getting around and taking it to the enemy team. Here we see a lower tiered heavy, a KV-3. Our first round takes his tracks off, and this is just where, really, light tanks, and also medium tanks, but especially lights, just can feel so rewarding when you've detracked a heavy tank that was on full hit points, and you just out-traverse his turret. And we put, I guess, four or five rounds into him there. That poor guy didn't stand a chance, and we secure our fifth kill of the game. So what a riot in the first four and a half minutes of this game. But unfortunately, the enemy team seemed to have uh, had a fairly good roll on that eastern flank, and so that means that it is neck and neck right now. Seven tanks remaining on either side, but luckily we found a Cromwell completely out in the open. I would never recommend driving towards the west of that ridge line on the far east of the map. 
this Yak Panther 2 and this Grumwell have made a, a real big mistake and I'm hopefully punishing them as much as I can for it. We put one round into the Cromwell, two into the Panther 2, but I do get spotted, so it's time to try and hightail out of there because we don't want to take too many hits. Well, the armor on the LTTB is probably one of its strongest aspects. It's got 90 millimeters on the front of the hull and also on the turret, 75 on the side of the turret and 45 millimeters on the side of the hull, which means that you can side scrape in this tank against all the way up to 150 millimeter caliber guns. And we're talking about, you know, BL-10s on the ISU-152, we're talking about the T-30, we're talking about Tier 10 tank destroyers only managing to overmatch the side of the LTTB, which is absolutely lovely. Now we've got the side armor of this Oni here, but now that he's turned himself a little bit, we're only going to manage to track him and the S-1 finishes him off. But just after that, the IS-2 finishes my S-1 off and the T-3485 comes around the corner, securing our sixth kill. There's the top gun. This T-3485 on the enemy team is firing APCR rounds, as I guess a lot of people would be loading the gold in their plus two matchmaking right now. I do a handbrake turn to get the front of the vehicle towards, but it looks like I overangle the tank just a little bit, so the T-3485 not only takes my track off, but also damages my ammo rack. Hopefully he'll miss this shot. Uh, yeah, there we go. Did he even fire? Maybe I took his ammo rack out. We will have to just guess, but he did allow me to shoot him a couple of times there for free without returning around but yeah I, I think he might have lost his ammo rack there or possibly even his gunner I didn't see maybe he fired at the Cromwell behind me either way seven kills 3,300 damage we are on an absolute tear right now in the LTTB and this is what I love in my light tanks having the mobility to put yourself in harm's way and then to be able to get out of it now while the gun depression on the LTTB is significantly better at five degrees run three degrees it's certainly not quite good enough to be able to use that position and you'd probably want to rather be in something like an M41 walk a black dog to be able to utilize that position to its fullest capacity talking about that tank that thing's an absolute monster now at tier 8 light tank which has retained all of its previous statistics as it is a premium vehicle but has just got that newly buffed matchmaking so sometimes it does have the pleasure of uh, just trouncing tier 6 opponents whereas previously it could only meet down to tier 7 so now we have an 88 in our front of us right now and a Yag Panther 2 on our left now there's two tier 6 medium tanks on the enemy team of Cromwell and a VK3001P that we're also going to have to watch out for but right now I'm just hoping will we pick up our Radley Walters with one shot into the top of yes no Oh my word, it looks like the cro the Comet on the enemy team nearly said a Cromet there. That's a combination of a Cromwell and a Comet. Finishes off the 88, so we don't actually get our Radley Walters. But here, the Cromwell arrives. The VK is towards the center of the map. And I think about going after the Cromwell, but instead turn my attention to this rather large German tank destroyer that's facing me in the open. The Cromwell finishes off the Cromwell on the enemy team, and I just get to use my fantastic engine power and mobility to be able to sneak around the Yag Panther 2 and finish him off. What a result there and this Cromwell decides to just get a little bit in front of me oh well not really to blame and we did a pretty darn good job there to be able to take down those two opponents without losing too many of our hit points in fact that Cromwell still had enough to be able to take at least two or three shots from the enemy Cromwell so he could have probably handled him by himself nevertheless eight kills 4182 damage and I smell blood in the water and like some horrible little Soviet shark we're going to be able to get into position to be able to shut down this VK3001P who does give me a parting blow there taking off my ammo rack for the second time so it's a jolly good thing that we were able to repair it earlier otherwise maybe it would have been a full blowout nine kills a whopping amount of damage for a tier 8 light what a round of World of Tanks. So through securing nine kills in this game, we pick up a Radley Walters medal in addition to the high caliber for the 4,250 damage that we dealt. And there were only a couple of things that I really didn't like about this replay. Number one that I didn't get to showcase at the LTTB actually has very good frontal armor. If we go over here and take a look at the whole of the front of the tank, look at all the auto ricochet angles that you can pick up on this vehicle and even still angled like this the whole of the front plate here is 170 millimeters of effective and the turret can at least take a few hits occasionally and it looks like against that t3485 i just over angled trying to make the front of my vehicle good enough to be able to take the hit from him which was undoubtedly a mistake and in addition to that one of the things that i dislike about the lttb is its limited amount of ammunition 42 rounds of 180 damage forced us to have to dip into our apcr rounds unnecessarily 
in this game, and thus we actually end up losing a few credits. But trust me, for every time the matchmaker blesses you like this and you get to play against a wealth of tier 6 opponents, you're gonna have to deal with tier 10 tanks, and then you'll want to have as many APCR rounds in your vehicle as possible, because you're quickly going to find that 170mm just simply doesn't cut it. Nevertheless, this was certainly an action-packed round of World of Tanks. It's not often that I get to pick up 9 kills. Hopefully I was able to show you a thing or two about the LTTB and why I love the mid-tier Soviet light tanks so much. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments what you think about the LTTB, especially if you were a lover of the vehicle in the previous patch. How do you think these changes in patch 9.18 have affected it? And do you agree with me that obviously apart from the DPM it just feels a little bit better? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.